And welcome, Flip Clock fans. You're looking at an RCA radio, Flip Clock radio, that's got some major issues with it. So we had someone send me an email, asking me questions about the clock. It took a lot of persuasion, but I finally got the person to send it in to me so I could take a look at it, because I thought it'd be interesting. It's an RCA model, RWS467W. And the problem with the clock is it does not flip, but it's got some other issues as well. To get into this clock, it's pretty simple. There's one screw on the bottom and one screw on the back, and then the whole thing just slides right out. Don't have to take any knobs off with this one. Now you see that the speaker is in the back, and thankfully there are two two uh, connectors you can just disconnect from these posts. Make sure you take notice of which post you took them off of. There are four there for some reason. That's going to give us better access to the clock here. And I can already see something that's bad news. Now what could that be? Well the bad news is that the motor is running. And if your motor is running but the clock is not flipping, that means there's a gear issue. Now the gear issue could be in the mechanism or here. This is the gearbox. This takes the motion of the motor and translates it down to movement. It's going to allow the clock to flip every minute. And that's a bad thing. These, clock, these clocks were not made to be serviced, the motors. But we're going to have to service it. I don't have this motor handy. So we're going to have to get up in here and see what is going on inside there and also find out if we can fix it. Now I'm working on this with the clock energized at this second. Uh, don't do that. These RCAs and the Magnavoxes have the power right where you could accidentally touch them. It's deadly. So I look at the gearing of the mechanism itself and there is absolutely no problem. Everything's flipping like it should. Now some people think if you grab this you should be able to turn that you should not. If it's geared correctly, you should not be able to turn this one right here. So, that means something on the inside is wrong. There's some adhesive here. I'm going to have to get that off. And there's a screw right in the middle of this can here. And then, I'll pull this gear off here in a second. It's going to have to come off. And while I'm doing that, I'm going to have to also find an extra part. We'll get to that in a minute. You'll see we we'll have uh, some parts to replace in there most likely. Anyway, this is this adhesive stuff I'm scraping off. And I'm also going to have to cut there and kind of release that. Need to carefully cut with my razor blade knife here. I love this knife. It's got replaceable blades. And I'll just continue working on this carefully. Then when you get to where you want to start prying it off, you've got to be very careful. This is all aluminum. And you will almost certainly bend something if you get in a hurry. Don't get in a hurry. So we get this protective can off. And we get down to this plate here. And the gearing. And I'm just scouting it out here. And I'm pretty sure I know what's going on here. So let's see if I can show you. Now I'm spinning the motor. There's a brass gear that comes through. And it should impact one of the plastic gears. This one right here. That's the first gear. And you can see something. You may be able to see it. Those teeth are chewed up. So I'm not getting any movement of the other gears. That gear right there, right, right there has to be replaced. To do that, I've got to undo these rivets here. Now, I'm, those, again, if this was made to be serviced, that would be screws. But I'm going to show you how to do that. And it actually can come apart pretty easily. Relatively easily, I'd say. So I'm going to use my same handy-dandy knife here and scrape those off. Scrape the swelling off. It's, it's like it's not really a rivet, but it's been pressed and it expanded. So you can scrape that off and then pop that plate off. There's that gear. 
so that we can get to that gear and replace it. It's going to be a trick, but uh, like I said, I do have some parts. This is just on my desk. This is just, but there's not going to be a gear in there. I've got a boatload of parts down in the basement, so I've got to go down to the dungeon. And I actually found a motor that I was able to cannibalize and find the actual gear I needed. That's it right there. It seems to be working fine. Now the trick is getting this back together because those arbors have to go right into the plate. And that is tricky. It took, oh, my fingers. I'm actually doing another project at the same time I'm doing this one. It involves peroxide. Yes, I know I'm supposed to be using gloves. Don't worry, I'm fine. But yeah, I'm doing, I'm doing two projects at once. So this takes a while. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna snap that back into place. And you see I didn't bend anything, it snapped right back into place. And we'll have to test it to see if we're good. And right there you can see the gear in place. And when I go to spin the motor, you may or may not be able to see, but right away everything's moving. So all the gears are moving now, even up here at the top. Now, of course, it gears it down. It'll start slowing down. You won't be able to see it. And it's doing great. It's not making any noise as it's spinning. So it looks like we've done good. We won't know until we get everything together. So we'll have to get everything back. And we're going to use this adhesive. This is uh, it's for washing machine felt. So, or dryer felt. I'm sorry. And um, it's for dryer felt. And it, it's high heat. And it's, gonna, and it's sticky. So it's going to work good. Now I'm also going to use this white lithium grease on the gears. I don't think it's entirely necessary, but it's going to help keep things from getting buggered up. It doesn't break down the plastic. But the places that I was calling rivets or the swellings there on this back plate, we're going to have to put something on there to kind of keep it firm or just for protection. So this we're using this, that's my wife's, it's a... Uh, fingernail polish but it's a super fast dry fingernail polish and if you've been inside of clocks you may have noticed they've got uh, paint in there and it's probably enamel and it's probably very similar something to keep screws not moving it's not like Loctite it's like semi-permanent they didn't really want this the screws to be moved at all so I'm going to use this on here and that's going to just kind of give me a double assurance that that's not going to accidentally come loose I really don't think it will and this is just so I can test my that on my thumb later to make sure it's dry instead of putting my fingers on the thing. It also looks good. So that'll harden up and that's going to keep things really nice and neat. So we've got everything back together. You can see the brown uh, adhesive I put on there to seal that can. So we'll plug things in here and everything starts up as expected. That was what it was doing before. So we're going to have to check and see if it's going to work. There is no uh, noise coming from the motor. We won't know until it flips. The waiting game. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to time it. I'm going to get some other clocks here. We've got three flips here. Now to get a three flip clock to go off at the same time is going to take days. It's not going to happen. I'm just having doing this for fun. We're just going to see if they fl if this flips and yes it does it's flipping fine so i'm going to run it for a while and here i've run it for a, quite a while and everything's doing exactly the way i was hoping this is a turned out to be a nice clock radio the clock's working i cleaned up the tiles i cleaned up the inside of the face so the clock's really looking good thanks for taking the time